Welcome, tea friends. This is Barb Gully of Barb's Tea Service, and we're back with our podcast, Courtesy on TV Studios. I am here with studio engineer, co-host, and arm candy, Chris Gully. Rita Splendid, uh, for those that uh, are watching on video, look at what I'm wearing. We're going to talk about that. Oh, we are for podcast 18. Yes. And we're back after a two-week hiatus. Mm -hmm. We've been all over the place. Have been. So we were up north at Pemberley Pines for a while. Mm -hmm. We were in Grand Rapids for a special wedding. And we also celebrated Mm -hmm. someone's milestone birthday. That's making us feel very old. (laughs) Yes. So the milestone birthday is for our very first special guest mm-hmm. our our son yes rob he's also our very special first child that's right <laughs> so a little emphasis on more emphasis on the latter yeah, yeah, you yeah. know but oh, yeah. uh, all right uh, we get it yeah so he's we're saying a uh, happy birthday to rob and we're going to be celebrating a little bit more with him this weekend yes okay but with all that we also just passed the holiday weekend labor day here we go. Wow. It, summer went fast. It sure did. And and it's always kind of a bittersweet weekend mm-hmm. because it's signaling the the wrap up of summer. Uh-huh. And it also yes. comes with some some rules that may be outdated. Uh-huh. But, or not. <laughs> so our theme for this podcast mm-hmm. is white after Labor Day. Yes. We're going to be having white tea, Uh and we're going to talk about this old-fashioned adage, not to wear white after Labor Day. It might become new fashion. You never know. Could be. So we're going to talk about whether it's still relevant Mm -hmm. and where it came from. Okay. All right. And then we'd also like to talk a little bit about, uh, address some readers' feedback. Uh And if we have time, we're going to share a fashion etiquette tip. We're good. And I think we will have time. All right. Okay. All right. But first, tea. Wow. So today I picked silver needles. Mm -hmm. And I got this from Eli Tea Bar in Birmingham. Yes. And it goes with today's theme, white tea. We're talking about white tea. Why not have it? After Labor Day. (laughs) Exactly. So... Before we talk about what white tea is, I thought, well, let's just sample this and and see what you think. All right, here we go. So it is, uh, uh, well, it's definitely not a black tea. Uh, Exactly. It's very, it's a uh, very light tasting, um, kind of, kind of like a, and I don't mean this in in any kind of negative sense. I'm just giving you my what my tasting notes are. It's kind of like a like a like a raw vegetable, uh, you know, and and then and then the after, uh, then kind of the uh, aftertaste is maybe, and again, not a, a negative thing. It's just like a, kind of a c- cooking water type of okay, uh, of okay. Feel to it. That's that's an interesting yeah. perspective mm-hmm. because it, it, the the flavors are very subtle. Right, right, right. So when you're saying raw vegetables, you're probably thinking of something lighter. Right. Um, yeah. But yes, it's it's known to have florals mm-hmm. and. And I think it's interesting that you say this because we generally drink a lot of black tea. Right. And sometimes on the dark side, we yeah. drink coffee. Yes, we're not opposed to that. No. <laughs> and and for those of us who, who drink some of the stronger flavors, mm-hmm. it, it's it, you almost have to work up to this. It's right, right, right. Because it's very nuanced That's and right. very subtle. Yeah. So I, I like it. Though. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So white tea is the very new growth of the tea plant. Right. But I thought in order to provide some context, we'd go back and talk about a few tea basics. Mm-hmm. So there are four basic categories or high level categories of tea. Right. And we've talked about them before. Mm-hmm. Black, oolong, green, and white. There's mm-hmm. some subcategories, but those are the four biggies. And the the difference between them is their oxidation period and how they're processed. Okay. So the black has the longest oxidation period. That's simply when the how long the leaf is exposed to air after right. it's plucked right. from the bush. Right. 
So the, the black tea has the longest oxidation period. That's what give it, gives it its darker color and stronger taste. Right. Then you go to the other side of the spectrum. Right. And you have white tea. Mm-hmm. Very little processing. Right. And as I said before, it's the very new growth. Right. Of, right. of the tea plant. Yep. So the bud, right. that, or they call them shoots. Yep. So one thing I'm curious about uh, is, um, you know, we've, we're able to have different teas. Now, um, on one of our New York trips, we went to a, a tea room, and one of the things they did was they would offer um, tea pairings mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. with each of the, the courses that they would serve, which I had not really seen before. Maybe others do it, but mm-hmm. I just hadn't seen it. And uh, I thought that was very interesting. So... Uh, with this type of tea, um, what would you tell our listeners and viewers it might go with if they wanted to have a little nosh with their tea? Okay, so great question. Mm-hmm. And I would say because of its subtle flavor, right. it's thought a good pairing for white tea would be berries, okay. apricots, uh-huh. light pastries like madeleines or croissants. Ah, yes, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to throw this one out to you. Yes. If you were going to pick a cheese, what would you... Select. Oh, very light, like a like a brie or something like that. Excellent, yep. excellent. I I would say that's okay. True too. Very Just good. Things that are mild. Yes. All right. And uh, I love that. That's okay. something we're gonna have do to a do. little bit more of. Yes. Right. Yes. right. Okay. Okay. So another thing about this, even though it has the subtle flavor, mm-hmm. this will surprise perhaps you and some of our listeners. Yes. It is the tea that has the most caffeine. That is interesting. It okay. is. Okay. You'd, you'd think the opposite. You would. Yep. You would. But the reason it has the most caffeine or typically has the most caffeine is mm-hmm. because it's that very new growth of the tea plant. Right. And that's where the caffeine is concentrated in those buds. Okay. It's uh, a growth accelerator. Mm-hmm. So it helps the tea right. grow faster. And it's a natural, natural insect and pest repellent. Okay. So you're telling me you're drinking pesticide. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, uh, natural. It's not <laughs> okay. a chemical cup of Roundup or anything. Yeah, okay. But, okay. So so keep that in mind because right. you think as you're going yep. up, it's, mm-hmm. it, the caffeine level might be going down, but right. that's not true. Okay. Okay. So where did tea, white tea come from? Okay. Not surprising. Mm-hmm. From China, yep. as most teas originated. And here is kind of interesting they didn't really steep the tea leaves originally the white tea leaves. Mm-hmm. what they would do is grind it up and then whip it into this foamy white okay. concoction with water yes not unlike i'm guessing yeah with matcha tea right okay. because you ground up the leaves mm-hmm. and then you uh whip it into pour in the hot water and whip it into this green froth okay okay so that's what they were typically using it in china uh-huh. until about the 1700s that's when they started steeping mm-hmm. the leaves okay and then they didn't even export it until the late 1800s we didn't know what we were missing <laughs> we didn't so this now became started to get a little bit popular it's still probably one of the newer ones mm-hmm. on the scene right, right? but because it did get a following. You know, other countries started right. producing it, like India and Nepal. And then there's this, there's this small country in Africa, mm-hmm. Malawi. Okay. And they produce this very, very different white tea. Uh-huh. And it's referred to as antlers. Ah. Malawi antlers. Okay. And it's because their bushes have very long shoots. Okay. So it resembles an antler. Okay, nice. So that might be a nice tea yes. to have at Pemberley. I, I love that idea. Yeah. And what it just occurred to me, now correct me if I'm wrong, uh, shouldn't we also add northern Michigan perhaps to that list of white tea producers? Light of day? They do. They do. And we are going to be going there yes. in a couple of weeks. Yes. So we'll talk to yeah. Angela. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting. <laughs> As I recall, uh, again, correct me, uh, so she has, um, you know, they, I don't know, can't remember, uh, they cover, they cover, she, she covers it and, and boosts the, um, so I think Northern Michigan is like growing zone four. And I think with what she does with the coverings, she takes it to growing zone eight. Right. Where you can actually grow tea. And I think that's pretty much their, their crop. They, it is. It they, is. They pick the white tea there. That is. Because she couldn't mass produce black tea. Right, right, right. That kind of yeah. thing. But yes, white tea. So yeah, we'll go up there and... and um, Got to check that out. Uh, yes. 
Great point. All right. Glad you thought of that. Okay, so how do you prepare white tea? Mm-hmm. So with white tea, you're generally going to you're going to have the water less than a full boil. Okay. Because, again, subtle, nuanced. Uh-huh. You don't want to scorch it nope. and ruin these lovely, subtle flavors. Oh, no. So you'd be more like, so if you're doing a black tea, it would be up to 212 full right. boil. Mm-hmm. These you want to dial back, maybe 185, 100, 195. Okay. They have a longer steeping time, okay. too. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of cool. And I, I, didn't, I don't think I showed this to the camera yet, but right. this is where I got it from. Uh-huh. And... With Eli teas, what's kind of nice, on their label, they actually will tell you the suggested right. boiling mm-hmm. temperature as well as the steep time. Nice. And I thought it'd be kind of interesting, too, to show mm-hmm. what these look like. So if you're watching this, mm-hmm. this is what silver needles look like. Uh-huh. And you can see they're very aptly named. Right. That looks like a silver needle. Yes. Okay. Not, not terribly sharp, but... No. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Okay, <laughs> good observation. So China has two in particular. They have the silver needles. They also have white peony. Mm-hmm. And white peony has the shoot, the bud, right. but also the two little leaves uh-huh. of the new growth. Ah. So it tends to have a more balanced okay. All right. taste. So, All right. okay. Now, I'll, I'm going to say cheers to our white tea. You're here. And now let's talk about attire for Labor Day. Yes. After Labor Day, I should say. Uh-huh. So I see you're wearing a white shirt. I am, proudly. And do you know at one time that was considered a great fashion faux pas? Uh, that's that's ridiculous. You don't care about <laughs> rules. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> but you are, I will say, Yeah. you are a bit of a trendsetter. Uh, I try. And I think, uh, I know that, you brought back the bow tie and pocket square uh-huh. for a well, while. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think you have your pulse on fashion. Well, I try. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and you do have a, a good, a keen sense. So yep. I will say, yep. I'd like to tell you yep. where that rule came from. Uh huh. So it was probably uh, yet another way for the r- rich and wealthy to look down their nose on people who didn't know about the secret rule and to and they were probably not rich and wealthy. That's so true. Yeah. Bingo. All right. It started in the Gilded Age uh-huh. with the wealthy folks. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say... Speaking of bingo, yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we seem to talk a lot about these uh, yep. same topics: mm-hmm. Gilded Age, right. Downton Abbey, yep. Lemon Curd, mm-hmm. Scones. Yes, and I think for 2025 we might do Barb's Tea Service podcast bingo cards. Wow! And you're going to fill them up real fast, yes, because we talk about the same thing a lot. <laughs> well, that's okay. <laughs> that's what we do. Yep. Okay, so, but you are exactly right. right. This started. In the Gilded Age with the literally well-heeled, okay. the wealthy folks. So what they would do, in the, they would summer right. in the the Ham, Southampton or Newport. Right, right. Enjoy those ocean breezes out in the country. Right. Country. Yeah. And they would bring, they would pack their suitcases or right. have their assistants, yep. their mm-hmm. staff. Yeah, act, staff would do it. Come staff on, would come do on. It. <laughs> yeah, what am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> and they would fill the their trunks full of light colored and white colored clothes right. for their croquet playing. Yes, for the croquet playing, and <laughs> we should probably bring that back. <laughs> yes, okay, we should. next croquet. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, white was a great choice to be out in in yep. the sun. It reflects the sun. Yep. And also, tennis was being ah yeah was coming onto the scene as yeah. a very popular uh-huh. co-ed ah yes. sport. Okay. And sweat is is hidden by wearing white. If you wear white, you don't see the sweat so much. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. And and that was considered unseemly. Wow. Especially when you're in the company of the opposite sex. So I could be sitting here quite gross. <laughs> and, like, and you wouldn't know it. <laughs> I know. That's <laughs> Yeah. Well okay. <laughs> on, that, okay. on that note. Yes. So getting back to yep. uh this this white mm-hmm. attire that right. that folks would wear in the summer. So, and 
the other thing, as you mentioned, this was a way to yeah. separate themselves. It was a marker. It was a marker. So you're wearing white. Yeah. You you are not going to be cleaning the house no. or doing the landscaping. No. You're, you're going to be doing really nothing. You're just going to be oppressing the masses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In your light-colored clothes. That's right. <laughs> so it, it also showed that you didn't have to really work very right. hard. Uh -huh. So when these folks, though, would pack up or mm -hmm. their staff would pack up, right. they would, when they came back home to the city, right. they would leave the, the white, clothes right. left packed right. because even though they had money, yeah. they, they're still practical. When you were in the city streets, it was more dense. It wasn't right. quite as clean as, no. as it is. We didn't have the nice side. A lot of horses. A lot of horses. <laughs> so they would wear the darker colors. Right. Right. So they instituted this rule of wearing, not to wear white after Labor Day. Uh -huh. And you went after you returned to the city from your, uh, yes. from your villas. And it was like you said, it was another, it was kind of a code thing. Right. If you didn't it, it didn't adhere to that, then they knew yeah. you were probably new money. That's oh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> they're wearing white. Oh, <laughs> so, but it got legs. It it's tended to to stay on for quite a while. Uh huh. And you know what? It started to really get reinforced in the 1950s uh -huh. when there was just this plethora of women's magazines. Yes. Probably, I don't know, how much do they have to talk about, but yeah. this was a, a common theme. You yeah. know? And here we are talking about it. Here Amazing. we are, right. <laughs> but there's really, really no reason that you need to wear uh, or pack up your whites. Right. Right. And so you're, you're doing just fine. All right. But I will say. I love the validation. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so when I when I was looking at these different sources that were talking about right. how this rule came about, mm -hmm. uh, some of the heavy duty references like Southern Living and mm -hmm. Vogue. Yes. But again, we're not talking yeah. major yeah. history facts. This is <laughs> this is fashion. Right. And they do cite that there were people who did kick the system, like you. Mm -hmm. Coco Chanel was one of them. She's she's one of my heroes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. know that. But, yeah, okay. But more recent people who have gone against this mm -hmm. fashion yes. are Zendaya, uh -huh. Margot Robbie. Yes. Uh, well, <laughs> let me stop. These people would look good in anything, but, but continue. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I know it's not a great point, yeah. but uh, yeah, and even males. Yeah. It's not just the women. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, oh, who... Harry Styles? Yes. So, all right. David Beckham? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, all these people who look good, they can wear whatever they want. Nice. Okay. okay. So, it looks like you're in some good company. I love it. All right. So, I say mm -hmm. let's wave the white flag. Okay. And surrender this silly rule. We oh. wear what you want. Wow. Okay. And drink white tea if you want. Kind of bold. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, now, mm -hmm. I just, we've got. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're good. So we're we're, we're going to talk about some reader feedback because, uh, listener feedback, yes. because we haven't, uh, it's been piling up. It is, yes. And, and we've got to clear it out. <laughs> so, one one of our loyal listeners. Yes. Rick. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, acknowledged the podcast 17, our yep. last podcast where we talked, we had a Star Trek reference. Well, you know, ears perk up. <laughs> when we do the Star Trek reference, we find. <laughs> yes, for some. Yeah. And, and we, some tune it out. I don't know. <laughs> and we talked about Dr. Frankel's book, Steeped, The Chemistry of Tea. Right, right, And right. she mentions this Captain Picard. Jean-Luc Picard. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Jean-Luc Picard. And he summons up Earl yeah. Grey. Right. And you mentioned how he does this. Right, right. And, and uh, I couldn't, you know, it's been a minute since I watched the show, uh, um, and I couldn't remember the, uh, I didn't want to do the faux pas by calling it something it wasn't because we would get called out. Sure. So, uh, Rick helped us out. And what is it called? It's called the replicator. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, I know. All right. So this, this is what our, these are what our listeners are craving. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> very good. Thank you. <laughs> and then another loyal Listener. Listener, Pam. Yep. She would harken back to our podcast 
I think it was 16, right. where we talked about Vermont. Right. And we talked about our visit to Calvin Coolidge's birthplace yeah. and family right. homestead, mm-hmm. Plymouth Notch. Yes. And we had mentioned that when we visited there, we had found out that right. President Harding, who yeah. he was the vice president right. for President Harding, President Harding had died. Right. This is August of 1923. Right. And he got word of Coolidge Coolidge of (laughs) 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 yes so Coolidge was the one who who found how did he find out yes we we couldn't figure out how he well because our when we were there uh so so uh uh, Vermont is not exactly a, a populated area right even now even now and so we're in the hills of uh or the mountains the green mountains of Vermont <laughs> and uh and it, there's you know his his presidential origin story how he got word and, and I'm this is the 20s phones were not really an extensive thing at this point right and uh and travel was probably you know uh I mean you know we had cars but we've seen the roads there <laughs> right so right yeah. so it's like oh uh, that was pretty quick turnaround to get to get the word so we so yeah. um Pam filled us in yeah what what it what how he got word uh-huh. was there was a, a neighbor nearby who yes. had a phone yes and maybe the only phone Could in the be, area yeah, probably the only guy yep Coolidge probably left word with his folks because right. he was there visiting his family right during this time so the people who needed to inform Coolidge called this neighbor. The neighbor right. drove over yep. to the Coolidge homestead and informed him. Right. Coolidge's father, yep. who was a notary public, yes. performed the uh, o- oath, oath of office. Right. Swore him in. Swore him in. And then Coolidge then promptly went back to bed. Yep. Okay. <laughs> cool as a cucumber. Yes. All right. But the very next day, here's another yep. kind of interesting footnote to mm-hmm. the story. Right. After, after that the next day, he goes up to Washington, D.C., right. and he is sworn in by a justice of the Supreme Court of Washington, D.C. Right, right. And he was... He so was now a second time. Second time, yep. yes. And and this was on the instruction of the current attorney general right. at the time. Yeah. And the the justice didn't question it right. at all because he figured, well, yeah. maybe they want to make sure that yeah. everything was, yeah, it was... It was on the up and up. Right. But the story didn't come out until nine years later. Uh-huh. Can you imagine keeping something like that? It was a into- huge scandal. Nah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would have shown up on Twitter, yeah, I think, within right. 24 yeah, hours. Right, right, right. Anyway, so what? what's great for the T connection yes. is the second swearing in uh-huh. took place at my favorite place to have tea in Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah. Okay. The uh, what's the the, uh, the Willard, Willard Hotel. Hotel? Yes, yes, yes. The Willard Hotel, and they have a great lobby. They have a great lobby. I, I, it's. I wonder whatever became of that. <laughs> right. It's just when you walk in, yeah. it, it's just breathtaking. Right, right, right. It's beautiful, and it's this huge lobby, and then right. the tea room is is down the hall. Right, right. But this lobby was. It was where it was where the power players would uh, would when they would come and visit or. Um, and hang out, and um, it was a great place to catch these people and uh, I'll do something with them. I don't know. Influence them, yeah, perhaps? Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's where the term lobbyist came Amazing. from. Amazing. Isn't it? Tea gets around. It does. So we wrote about that. We visited there September 2019. Right. There's a little reference to uh, a blog story back then, but a full blog story is May of 2020 if you want to know a little bit more about the Willard Hotel and the afternoon tea. Okay. Okay. So how are we doing on time? Uh, We got about five minutes. All right. Good. Then we do have time for our fashion etiquette tip. All right. And I want to tell you that it is found in this book. Uh Uh-huh. This is Barb's Tea Service. Uh Uh-huh. 12 12 Etiquette Essentials, Formal Dining, and Tea Time. Yes. Okay. And... This is on the the chapter of accessories. Aha, uh-huh, yes. Mm-hmm. And I thought it would be nice to talk about gloves. Gloves. I love gloves. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> yes. And you do have many gloves. I do. And you have battery-powered gloves. I do, yes. <laughs> it's, yeah. You don't wear those to formal occasions. Uh, you won't let me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. So this was once the de rigueur uh -huh. accessory for women when they would attend formal occasions. Right. You have to wear your gloves. Uh -huh. And it up until about the 1950s, it started yeah. losing favor. Right, right, right. Interesting. It kind of coincided with the yep. uh, re reinforcement of no white after Labor Day. Yes. So yeah. I don't know how those. A lot of things were happening. <laughs> right. it's, hard to, it's hard to keep keep up. But now it's starting to be a thing. A thing. It's it's finding favor. It's a little trendy. Sure. So we thought, okay, well, let's review yeah. some of the tips for wearing gloves. Okay, even battery operated ones, right? <laughs> well, no. Okay. All leave right. those at home. Okay. <laughs> Unless you're walking the dog. All right. Or out in the out in the snow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are some rules of thumb or fingers. Yes. Yeah, so, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you three. One is the generally the shorter the sleeve, uh -huh. the longer the glove. Yes. Okay. Makes so sense. if you think about yeah. Jackie Kennedy wearing those lovely yeah. sleeveless yeah. sheath gowns uh -huh. and she'd have the long gloves. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And then the next one, number mm -hmm. two, yep. is what with when you're wearing gloves, what do you do with your rings uh -huh. and bracelets yes. and watch? Okay. Well, that's a great question. What it, is it? It is. I hadn't thought of that. Well, typically you would wear, all of those would go under your glove. So stay, you'd, stay on your hand. They would stay on your hand. You'd put your glove yeah. over. So as, as you're taking the glove off, you would, you would display all that bling that you were keeping hidden. Good point. Yes. I'm glad you brought up the, the big bling. Yeah. Because yeah. it's considered okay if you have a very fancy bracelet. Yes. So, oh, uh, yes, oh, one you that's... You have decisions to make. Yes. Well, so if it's, it's a big, chunky, right, right, right. fancy bracelet, that can right. go over the glove. Okay. So good to know, right? Right. And then when do you take the gloves off? Okay. When you're going to fight? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no, that's hockey. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> right. Okay. So uh, most etiquette consultants will tell you they all agree on the fact that you would take them off for dinner okay you're not going to be eating them right with okay them. but you would when it comes to dancing mm -hmm. or shaking hands yes that's some gray area okay all right so what we recommend is read the room okay take some cues yes from your fellow party goers okay and as we say when in rome oh, yeah wear gloves <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so do I hear? Yeah, I think so. That sound. Okay, the tea kettle is on. Yep. And it means we are off. It's it's <laughs> time to wind down our podcast, just like summer's winding uh, down. Here we go. Yes. Okay. But we want to thank everyone yep. for listening mm -hmm. and slash watching. Yep. I want to thank On TV Studios for allowing us to be here. Right. And want to thank my co-host arm candy you're Chris, welcome who wears gloves <laughs> appropriately that's right and uh check back on our yep. barbs tea service.com and our blog excellent okay as we like to say we're out please stay tuned all right very good <laughs>